Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Mohammad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about how you can set up your yearly holidays with just one click. Yeah, you can do that. Let me share my screen. I will show you how to do that. While I'm sharing this screen, if you're new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just hit the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. I please request you all to subscribe to my channel because recently I have seen the YouTube analytics and I found out that almost 90% of my viewers are not my subscribers. It is it's a request from my side to you that please subscribe to my channel. This helps me to boost on the YouTube community as well it can reach out to other people, those who are in need of these kind of solutions. So please share this video if you like this at the end of this video. So moving on. So let's for an example, you get a list from your HR department that these are the holidays which you are going to have on 2024 or even in future as well. But the thing you need to set up your out of office or kind of holidays on your calendar. So for that, you need to create an event on your Outlook calendar, then only it is possible right that you are out of office on that particular day and also it is helpful for you as a reminder while you are planning for your vacation or a short holidays so to do that i found a way where you can just click off a button you can able to all update all your outlook calendars so how to do that is basically two ways so first of all i will show you one and then i will show you the other one so let's for example if you receive this kind of holidays like these are the serial numbers, 10 holidays, these are the holiday name, and these are the dates, and these are the day of the week. So what you need to do here is you can just create an Outlook list. I mean, Microsoft list. You can just click on this icon, any of your office, if you are in Excel or if you are in Word, but it has to be in online. So if you click on that, then you will see this icon list here. So once you click on that, it's going to open up this window. So whatever list you have, it is going to show you here. If you don't have anything, then that's fine. You can just click on new list here then it will open up a pop up window where you need to select from these predefined templates or you can also create of your own. You just need to click on blank list and once you click on the blank list, then it will open up a new window kind of like this. Here you will see the title as the first column that the default it will come and then you will see this add column button. So once you click on the add column button, it will open up a pop up window here. There you need to select from these options. As a title, we can keep it for the holiday name. And the next column which we need is the date. So here as we have just only one day for each and every holiday. So I'm just selecting it as a date time here, for example. And then we need to select next here so that we need to give a name here, date time. If you want to include a time as well, I don't want to include the time for now. So everything is fine. Just you need to click on give the name and then click on save. So once you click on that, it will create a date column as well here. So this part is done, but I will tell you the another reason by end of this video. First, let me continue this one. So this job is done. Now the thing is you need to create the first procedure, which is one by one. If you're adding it one record here, then it has to update also on your Power Outlook calendar. So to do that, you need to open up your Power Automate flow. This is actually not a premium license which you need. You can also do it with your existing license, which is a regular license. The, but just make sure that you have a Power Automate access to that. If it's not, you need to sign up with your Power Automate one. So click on that. I made a, some separate videos. I made some separate videos on how you can access Power Automate. All right. So. Once you are into Power Automate, so if you click on the Home tab, then this is going to be like this. You need to click on My Flows, or you can also click on Create Flows, or also on the top you can click on New Flow, and then you need to select here Instant Cloud Flow. Um, no, it has to be Automated Cloud Flow because when you are updating it on your SharePoint list, then it has to update here. Either you can go through this process, then it will open up a window here where you need to select your connectors or the easy way you can do it is you need to go to your list and then on the top screen you have option to integrate just click on the integrate and then you will see power apps power automate and power bi click on power automate and then you see it has a create a flow so once you click on that it's going to create a flow for you 
and it is giving you multiple options, predefined templates. From here, you can select what you need actually. But if you didn't find the thing which you are actually uh, looking for, like I need to update Outlook calendar. So in that case, you can just click on show more. Even if you don't see anything here, you just need to click on this plus icon. It is going to open up your new Power Automate window. From here, you need to look for that options. What actually I'm looking for? I'm looking for a SharePoint list to Outlook event. This is what I need to update and then click on enter. Then it's going to give me a list here. Request manager approval for leaves and create an Office 365 group events. I don't need this actually. So instead of this one, I'll just remove SharePoint to Outlook event. Then I'm getting another one, which is also not this one. But what if I search for list here, list to Outlook event. OK, if I just click here SharePoint list, uh, let me type here SharePoint list Outlook event. Then I see this option here, book a new calendar even after a new SharePoint list item is created. So this is what I am actually in need here. So once you click on that, it's going to create every steps for you that here we need only two connectors, which is SharePoint connector and Office 365. You need to log into your email ID and then click on continue. Then it's going to create you the flow automatically for you. The only thing is you need to configure how and what need to be done here. Then everything is done. So you need to save this flow and then you need to test it out. Then everything will work as usual. So what are the steps it has taken here? So first of all, if you just click on this one, when a new item is created here, here you need to select your location where these things are available. Even though we have come up from this list itself, but it is actually not integrating all these features here because the thing here, we have not selected here any of these options. We just use the plus icon. So it is we are creating a new one, not a predefined one. So that's the reason it has not bring up all these connections here. You need to add everything manually here. So for example, uh, in my case, I need to just copy and paste my environment here. If I click here on the top, I can see it my company name here. So I just need to add until my email ID and then list here. I just need to copy this thing. And if I come back here on the flow, just select on this one. It will give you multiple options where it is available but I have it on my personal thing. So I just need to copy and paste my personal thing here and then hit on enter custom value. And when you click on the list name, then it's going to load the list of list available in my login. If I just keep only till my name here and then click on list one. Yeah, you just need to click keep only till you just need to keep only till your name. Like HTTPS and then the company name and then the mysharepoint.com and personal and then your name. After that, you just need to click on this drop down. Then you will get the list of available SharePoint list which you have. Click on anyone which you are created. And in the next step, if you see the conditions, it contains any value. If you want to add any kind of conditional filter that you want to filter it or something, then you can also make use of that. But if you don't need this kind of filtration and other things, then you can go to this one which I created here. It's a similar thing which I did here. The only thing is I have removed this conditional thing which I can just right click here and then delete. I had just added a new calendar event on this one. So if I click on this one, you can see the name of the SharePoint which is coming up here and also the list name here. And then I use this create an event. So you can also do it by clicking on this plus sign icon and then add an action. And here you can just type it here, create event. If you type this one, then it will give you the list of available options which we have. So here we can just use the first one which is coming from Office 365. Then it will add it it's like this one. If we click on this one on the left side, you will see this on the new designer. So first of all, you need to select where you need to update this event because you will have multiple things, whether you want to update it on your calendar or you want to update on your birthdays or US holidays. I selected here as a calendar and the subject what you want. If you click on this one, then it will load your dynamic thing. If you not, you can just click on this lightning icon 
then you will see this one. So title is basically the name of holiday on my calendar. I mean on my SharePoint list. So I selected here the title and the start time and end time. Basically, we just have a one column which is date column. But here if you have it for multiple days, this is what I mean to say at the beginning of this video that if you have a date for two days or three days of holidays, then what you need to do here, you need to create two columns from date and to date. And those two columns, you can add it from in this column and also on this column. But actually in our case, we have just only one column. So I need to convert few things here. If you see it here, I just use this to phrase date and time. So the column which we created here is actually the date column. We don't have any time over there. So what I did here, I just used this function that is phrase date time and then use this trigger body the date which is basically nothing but this triggering is happening from the SharePoint list row. So that's why it's trigger body and then open and close bracket and question mark it is asking for the column name. So the date is the column name within the square bracket and single quote. So closing this one and then click on update. Similarly, I need to add also for the end time. So if you have the start date and end date, both of them with the same date and time, like for example, we have a holiday on January 1st, so it will be treated as January 1st, 000, and end also January 1st, 000, which is hour, minute, and second, and nanoseconds. So if both of them are same, then this will not work. This will throw an error for you. So because of that, what I did here is I just added another step as an end time, which is basically the add days. Everything remains the same, which we discussed just now, which is a phrase, date and time, trigger, body and date. I just put additional thing here, which is add date. This is also a function in Power Automate. You can just click on add days and open bracket. And then if I end, I just use comma one, which is I'm adding it one day. So for January 1st is a starting date and January 2nd is an end date. But even though the date is 0000, 000 means it is 12 a.m. of January 2nd. So it will not count on the second day. It will be just count as on the first day itself, which is on January 1st. Just an example I'm seeing. And we need to select here other options are available here, which is 17 options are available. Uh, first of all, we need to select the time zone, which is I am selecting it here. And if you click on show all, then it will give you the list of available options, which is has. So out of these options, I just use is this option. Is this an all day event? Yeah, it is an all day event. I just select here. Yes. And then it is asking for any reoccurrence. I don't need that. And here show as so how you want to show it on your calendar out of office. So what are the options which we have busy, free, out of office, tentative, unknown and working answer. So when you're inviting it someone else to just to inform them, then you need to select these free options and then you can add the user email ID here, which is optional attendees here. Then it will also add it to their calendar so that they can also aware that you're not available on that day. But if you just want to update on your event calendar event, then you don't need to use this option here. You can just select out of office and nothing else. That's it. So once you do so, then if you start adding up one by one entry, like for example, if I open up my calendar on January 1st, 2024 is nothing is here. And now if I need to turn this on, first of all, the flow. Yeah, the flow is turned off. So if I click on turn on, I need to turn on the flow. It is now turned on and let me add a new list here. So on the top on this list, I just click on add new item. Here I will just add new year, even though the data is available, but just in case I'm just adding the value here. So here the date should be 1st of December. Yeah, and then click on save. Now let's go to here you have see the new list is added here. And if I go to this one, the next step. Okay, this is the one if I click on refresh. It is adding these many runs here. And let's have a look if it is added here uh, just now February and back to January now. Not yet, it is still running. Oh, even though the list is for one, it is actually triggered for all the dates here. If you see it here, it is succeeded here for a few of them and few of them it is running up here. 
and now the date it is showing up here 23rd december which is now and one two three four five six seven eight nine so it is added for i think for almost all days most of them are succeeded here um if i click on this one just to see what is the date of that it is this one and the calendar event is on august 15 okay so on my calendar if i move on to february march april may june july and august yeah you see it is added here amazing so this is going to add one by one here automatically as you can see it is added on april and the, these are the two events which is has and also some on the mars here so so far nothing on january So it will take some time based on your entry here. So this is how you can do that. Anyway, the another way how you can do is basically uh, you just need to go to Power Automate and then you just need to click on New and then Instant Cloud Flow. So once you click on that, you need to open up this window here. Here you need to select your connectors, which is basically the SharePoint and also the event here. So in the SharePoint, actually, I'm just selecting this one, which is Get Items. So get items means it will just take the, all the items available on that particular SharePoint list. So here is the same thing, which is we need to pass our site address and then we need to select our the list name. So once you click on that, it is will added here. And next one we need to add here for each. So how many entries are there in that particular list? It will going to loop those entries and then it will create an event for us. So the creating an event is the same process. We need to use the same thing here in the subject. We need to select the title as usual and in the start date time we need to use the same procedure but the only thing here instead of triggered body which we have seen last time because it's coming from a trigger and now we are calling it manually <coughs> and now we are calling it manually we need to select here items open and close bracket then everything remains the same here if you see here items here add day. everything is same and also they are all day event and show as out of office everything is same so Everything is same now and uh, if you add all the things on your SharePoint list, you just need to click on this button. In the flow, you just need to click on this and then play run. So if you click on the run, then it's going to add all your events for you. And uh, if I want to test it out on this way, which we have added here all in one. First of all, we need to delete that one entry, which is on the first year. Click here and then delete this one. All right, now let's go back here to the flow and run this one. Run flow. This also you can do it from your mobile application if you need to have a mobile app on your mobile. So let's click on this one and then see the status of this. This is today and it is succeeded here. Now if I open up my Outlook calendar, now you see it is added here as a new year and also on Mahasra Granthi, which is on 15th of Jan and also on Republic Day. Cool. So I don't need to update it manually one by one here, right? So when this is set up and even on the next year, like 25th, 2025, then if I also get the same list, then I just need to go here and then update my Microsoft list and then just run this button, run this flow, then it is going to update my calendar for the next year. This is so cool. You can also share this with other colleagues so that they can also use up this same flow. And it, if they run, then it is going to update on their Outlook calendar. That's how amazing, right? So you, how you can share it, you just need to click on the share here. Then you, they can just type it. You can just share it with your friend and then they can also access it from their power automate. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you have any queries and feedback, just please let me know in the comment section below whether I am too fast on this video or the way how I have shown is not good. I'm just taking your input so that I can also take care on my future videos. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.